Finally, let's take a look at the uh, large intestine, the last part of the uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. Now, when we look schematically at the uh, large intestine, what we find in regard to the uh, arrangement of the epithelium is as follows. Uh, there are no villi extending outward from the surface of the epithelium. In fact, the epithelium is composed solely of the surface and these downward folding uh, intestinal glands. The structure of the glands is similar but not identical to uh, those in the small intestine. The chief difference being between the proportion of cells in the gland which are enterocytes and those which are goblet cells, with goblet cells greatly exceeding the number of enterocytes, particularly as we move to more distal parts of the uh, colon. The same generalized arrangement for uh, cells in the gland is apparent as would be in the small intestine. That is that the upper and middle thirds of the gland approximately are made up of enterocytes and goblet cells with uh, stem cells and enteroendocrine cells being restricted largely to the lowest third of the gland. As with the small intestine, um, division of the stem cells results in cells which largely migrate upward and can become either enterocytes or goblet cells and when they reach the surface these cells are, are shed uh, to the exterior. Between the glands in the region shown here is some connective tissue but this isn't really very apparent because the glands are so tightly uh, packed uh, close together and the key function here in the large intestine is to absorb water and to secrete mucus which helps lubricate the uh, passage of the progressively more solid fecal material as it moves toward its storage site in the rectum. One other thing not illustrated on this uh, slide but which we'll see or on this schematic diagram but which we'll see on the slides is one key difference between the large intestine and the uh, small intestine and that is that in the large intestine instead of having a uh, approximately equal sized inner circular and outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. In the large intestine, the outer longitudinal layers, rather than being a complete layer, is really elaborated into three thickened bands called the tinea coli. And we'll see these on the next and subsequent slides. So here's a section of colon, and even at this very low magnification, we can see here the mucosa, which is uh, the darker staining surface here, so this is the lumen of the gut. Underneath it, a paler staining submucosa here, dense irregular connective tissue, maybe some loose connective tissue. And finally, a muscularis externa, which we can see here. Where I have the uh, pointer just now is largely circularly oriented smooth muscle, with perhaps a very thin layer of longitudinal muscle on the outermost surface. But over here you can see the muscle is elaborate and here what we'll find is that this is in fact a long longitudinally oriented uh, band of smooth muscle, one of the so-called tinea coli. You'll also notice that there is this dark material here and dark material here and these are lymphoid aggregations which are common enough um, underneath the uh, mucosa of the large intestine. So let's increase the magnification a little bit and let's concentrate just at looking along this region here. So this here is the where the mucosa is. We can see this is a relatively smooth surface and extending down from the surface are these intestinal glands. Even at this magnification you can see the paler staining uh, goblet cells which are um, a very important feature of the mucosa of the uh, large intestine. The thin pink line we can see here is muscularis mucosa. We'll look at it in more detail in a moment. And then here we see the muscularis externa and we'll examine this in a little more detail in a moment also. First, let's take a look at the epithelium, the mucosal layer. So here's the uh, surface. Uh, here, smooth surface. Here is a gland extending down here and we can see the pale foamy looking goblet cells which form the bulk of the cells of this gland. You see that as we get further down the cells more closely resemble columnar enterocytes and it's down in this region along here we would expect to find uh, mitotic cells where they're present. The lamina propria is the material which we find between the glands, which you can see in here, and you can see it's cellular, just as the lamina propria that forms the core of villi, or between the glands and the small intestine is. There's a thin, maybe two to three layers thick, uh, muscularis mucosa, we can see here. There's a submucosal layer extending from here to here, which in this case we can see is dense, irregular connective tissue, lots of fibroblast nuclei, and it contains quite an amount of blood vessels which supply the uh, smaller capillary beds that lie underneath and in the muscularis mucosa with a little bit of fat present also. Here's a little bit of peripheral nerve at the boundary between the um, inner circular layer and submucosal layer and that little um, bundle of nerve is connecting um, neurons of the uh, submucosal uh, plexus although none of them are visible here. 
Here's the inner circular layer of smooth muscle. It's maybe 15 to 20 cell layers thick, which we can see. And then here we see a very, very thin outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle, really not terribly significant. Here's a little bit of myenteric plexus between the inner smooth muscle and outer longitudinal muscle. And then on the external surface here we have serosa, so a little bit of connective tissue, and then we see the simple squamous mesothelial nuclei that form that peritoneal layer that sits on the much of the uh, colon. Now let's move down in magnification just a little bit so we can orient ourselves. And let's move over here where we can see, following the circular layer of smooth muscle, if we move here, we can see a very distinct blob or lump of uh, smooth muscle here. And if we look at this, what we see are smooth muscle cells cut in cross-section, indicating that this muscle is longitudinally oriented with regard to the long axis of the gut. And so this is one of the tinea coli, the longitudinal strips of muscle, of which there are three that extend across most of the length of the uh, large intestine. This tinea coli appears to be embedded in fat here. In fact, this is a portion of mesentery, and we can see that running in the wall of this mesentery, it's, it's got um, peritoneum on the surface of it, and then running in this fold of mesentery, we see here's a large vein, the accompanying uh, artery, another large vein here, lots and lots of fat, we see the adipose cells, and some more vessels here. So this is a portion of the mesentery through which the vascular structures reach the wall of the large intestine. Finally, just um, for reference purposes here, we can see this very, very, very dark staining, very intense dark blue staining region. If we go up in magnification here, what we'll see is this is made up of thousands, if not millions, of very, very intensely stained nuclei. We can't really see the cytoplasm of these cells, and these are largely T and B lymphocytes and some antigen-presenting cells, or cells of the immune system, which have uh, migrated and assembled in this region, where they're engaged, again, in sampling the extra external antigenic environment uh, in the uh, lumen outside here. Here's another part of the large intestine. In fact, this is very close to the proximal part of the large intestine. It's the appendix which juts out from the cecum, the first uh, large pouch of the uh, large intestine. And I've included this slide so that you can see, first of all, it contains fairly uh, classic looking colonic uh, epithelium. So we see a smooth surface with lots of glands that extend downward. And as we'll see in a moment, lots and lots of goblet cells. <coughs> The reason to pay attention to this slide is here, 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 and here. These are large lymphoid nodules with big patches of lymphoid aggregation uh, extending between them. And these large lymphoid nodules are, again, um, lymphoid cells engaged in sampling the external antigenic environment. In a sense, the appendix acts almost as a homologue of the pyrus patch of the, uh, of the ilium. And in fact, it's located very close to the terminal uh, part of the ilium. And you should be familiar with the appendix because material um, bacteria that are pathogenic, which can become trapped in the lumen of the appendix, it being narrow, can uh, multiply and form an infective uh, focus. And the appendix fills with pus and then uh, requires uh, operation to have it removed. Here again we can see smooth surface epithelium, tall columnar cells, lots and lots of goblet cells in these uh, intestinal glands. So this is the appendix, something which you will be required to know something about uh, pathologically in the not too distant future. Finally, I've included this slide for you to view, which is of the uh, junction between the rectum and the anus. Even at low magnification here, you should be able to see uh, mucosa epithelium that resembles the epithelium of the large intestine. So this is uh, rectum here. And then you should be able to see that the epithelium quite distinctly changes in this region here and looks quite different on the exterior here. It's actually changing from a simple columnar epithelium made up probably predominantly of goblet cells to a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium which we find uh, here. So let's go up a little bit in magnification. And let's have a look at that junctional zone between the two uh, epithelia. So here we have tall columnar epithelium, lots of goblet cells. Um, this is a fold or a shelf that extends uh, outward, um, the name of which you don't really need to know. And then here are these intestinal glands made up largely of goblet cells. So this is rectum on this side here. 
And along here, we have stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. So this is where the anus commences. In fact, the exact commencement, and therefore the uh, original uh, location of the proctodium, is exactly at this point um, here. One thing you should do when you look at a slide like this is you should be aware from your gross anatomy studies of the fact that you have an internal and an external anal sphincter with the internal sphincter being made of smooth muscle and is involuntary while the external anal sphincter is skeletal muscle and is voluntary. So you should look in this region here and in this region here and you should compare the muscle types which you can see and therefore you should be able to identify clearly for yourself the internal and external anal sphincters based entirely on the histological morphology of the uh, muscle cells that make up the muscle in this region and in this region as well. And this completes our uh, quick tour of the gastrointestinal tract.